All right, so I've pretty much got everything set up, and I'm basically ready to start recording into Ableton Live, uh, but I don't have any material to record yet. I haven't created a beat. Uh, I have a blank pattern in front of me, so I should probably make something first. Now, I was realizing that the kit that I currently have... This is a kit that I put together a while ago, and it's a little bit too busy for me to just initially start with. So I think I like to go with a slightly less busy kit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this in analog rhythm. I'm going to go into my kit menu. Uh, kit is right here and it's in red. All the things that are in red we can access by holding the function button, which is here. I'm holding function. I'm going to press kit. So now I'm in the kit menu. Now I could clear this kit. I could save the kit. Or I could load a kit. I'm going to go ahead and load a different kit. So if I hit yes here. And instead of loading one of the preset kits that are all tweaked and done nicely, I'm going to go ahead and load a blank clit, uh, kit. So I'm going to a blank slot here, number 41. I'm going to load that. And now I have a blank kit. So all of the sounds, they're just doing their default thing. Now, I think what I like to do is just go ahead and program a beat, and then I can start tweaking some of the sounds to get them um, more shaped how I like. And this will give us a chance to explore how easy it is to shape these sounds using the Overbridge plugin. Now, as I mentioned before, since we have the machine sequencer sync set to song position, uh, I can go ahead and start Rhythm's Sequencer uh, by pressing play in Ableton Live. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So you can see Ableton Live is playing. Uh, we can also see my sequencer here is going. You can see the red lights going through there. And I'm going to turn on my metronome in Ableton Live. Let's go ahead and turn this down a little bit. Now, using Rhythm Sequencer is very nice because Rhythm has a step sequencer. And the step sequencer allows you to use P locks, which are parameter locks, meaning that each step can have different parameter settings. And you can use these to really dramatically alter your beat. This is one of the most powerful features of Electron Sequencer, uh, but there's a lot more in play as well. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna just make this a very simple one bar beat. Uh, we're dealing with 16 steps and we can have up to four pages of 16 steps. Right now, each step represents the 16th note. So if I want a one bar beat, I can just have one page of 16 steps. So my page is over here. Uh, right now there's two pages enabled. That's why it's jumping back and forth between the first red dot and the second one. That means I have a two bar pattern right now. I'm gonna hold function, press my page button. And in here, uh, we have different sequencer modes. There's the advanced mode where each track can have a different length. And then there's the normal mode if I press up. Oops, there we go. In the normal mode, all the tracks are gonna have the same length. Right now it's set for 64 steps, which would be four bars. Let's move over here. The second number I'm gonna change, if I press down, this is gonna jump in increments of 16, and there we go. 16 steps, that equals one bar. I'm okay with that. We back out. All right. So I wanna lay down a very quick pattern here. I tend to like claps quite a bit, so I'm gonna select my clap, hold track, and select that. And now if I press my record button on rhythm, I can put this clap where I want it. Go ahead and go to my kick drum here. I've selected that, I hold track, select that. We can tell that it's selected because it's illuminated. So now we'll go ahead and put some kicks down. I've got my hi-hat up here. Select track, close hi-hat, and Let's go ahead and just lay some of these down. All right, very simple pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my metronome off now. So again, I was able to use the sequencer on rhythm, but let's say maybe I wanna tweak some of these sounds now. Let's go to our bass drum. My bass drum in Overbridge is here, BD1. So looking at the synth section, currently I'm only using the synth section. The sample section is off. So if I want to adjust parameters of this kick, I can do that here. Drive. Let me turn this down just a bit so it balances out more with everything else. Go to my clap here. Now looking at the clap, we can see the synth aspect, the level's all the way down. So we're not hearing the synth part. So I'm actually using a sample here for my clap 
Now if I wanted to, I can combine that with the synth up here. And I think it sounds pretty cool together. If you add a little bit of bit reduction to the sample, make it a bit more crunchy. Might be a bit too crunchy. There we go. And we'll go to our close hi-hat here. Now I like the idea of automating the decay time on the close hi-hat. Since I'm still using the sequencer on Rhythm, I'm gonna go ahead and automate that on Rhythm Sequencer. So I still have my hi-hat selected. I can tell because it turns orange <laughs> to show me that it's selected. And if I want to affect the decay time that's in the synth area, I can go to my synth area by pressing the synth button here, and my decay time is here. And you'll notice as I adjust this on Rhythm, you can see that parameter reacting in real time on Overbridge. So I can automate this in a similar way that I would automate something in Ableton Live. I'm gonna enable my live recording. I'm gonna hold the record button on Rhythm, press play. The record button is now flashing. Now any parameters I adjust while this is flashing will get recorded to our sequence. All right, so now we can hear that change. Very cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop Ableton Live, which will in turn stop Rhythm. Now I've got a drum beat that I like, and I think I'm ready to try to record these individual sounds into Ableton Live. 